Hey everyone, very good morning. Today we are going to cover the record sharing and security. This is the most important admin topics and uh, you may get theoretical questions, you may get scenario based question, you may get situational questions from this topic. So you have to make sure that you know this topic very well, no matter how good you are at triggers, if you are not able to answer the record sharing and security, then that obviously will decrease your chances of getting selected. So make sure that you give proper attention to this topic. I have started sharing the whiteboard uh, just a second. Uh, are you guys able to see? I just need to see how I can do this thing of not other people using <laughs> this. Just a second. Uh, this should be some setting. Okay, let's everybody settle down, move your cursors uh, on the bottom because I do not get any option to remove that from here. Okay. All right. Cool. So normally I don't do the whiteboards, but because this topic requires me to do so, I'll be doing that. Otherwise, I just go with the directly Salesforce org. Okay. So let me select the pen highlighter from here. Okay. All right. Let's begin. So record sharing and security has basically two uh options on the left hand side we have record level security and on the right hand side we have object level security okay. now on the object level security we have two options profiles and permission sets okay these are must to have thing like you need to have profile in your salesforce user otherwise you will not be able to create user the basic uh, purpose of profile is to give you the baseline access on objects so if you do not have access on a particular object no matter what you have done on record level security, no matter how much permissions you have given via record level security, you will not be able to see anything and you will not be able to do anything. So profile is definitely a must to have thing when it comes to object level security. So you need to have an object level security on any object in order to be able to see that object in order to be able to do anything on, on that object. So object level security is definitely a must to have thing. If let's say you do not have access on particular object, let's say account, then no matter what you have done via record level security, no matter um, uh, what is your OWD, no matter what is your sharing rule is, no matter how you have shared that record with that user, he will not be able to see the account and he will not be able to do the account. So object level security is the base level security. You definitely need to provide that in order to be able to do anything on that object. Okay. And then profile sets are just the extension of profile. Uh, G permission, uh, permission sets are just the extension of profile. So in case, let's say you have two users which are on same profile, but one of such user requires some extra permission. So what you're gonna do is that you will create a permission set and assign that permission set to that user. So that you need not to change the profile, but you will be able to give extra permission, okay. So that's how we do that. Anything which we already have given via profile, okay, we cannot remove any such thing via permission set. So we cannot restrict permissions via permission sets. Permission sets are basically to give extra permissions to user, not to remove permission or not to take back some permissions. Okay, so if you have already provided something on profile, permission sets uh, will not uh, 
override any such thing. They are basically just to use provide extra permissions. Okay, now coming back to the record level security, we have multiple options. We'll start from the bottom. On bottom, we have OWD. We call it organization wide default and organization wide default basically sets the baseline level, level permission on the object. And in a, in a minute, I will show you that in Salesforce org as well. Then we have role hierarchy. What role hierarchy does is that if let's say a user A is able to see that record and for that particular object role hierarchy has been permissible to provide permissions to person higher in the role hierarchy, then the manager of user A will also be able to see that or the user who is on the higher role hierarchy will also be able to see that record by the virtue of role hierarchy. And I will so show that thing in a minute. And then we have sharing rules. Okay. Sharing rules are basically the way we uh, share the records with different users. Okay. There are two options. One is uh, owner based sharing and the other one is criteria based sharing. And then we have manual sharing. If you have to manually share the record with another user, you can also share manually. And we also have something called Apex Managed Sharing. Okay, before we move on to the practical things, always remember in case of any conflict between profile and uh, uh, sharing settings, you can say sharing role or anything. In case of any conflict between record level security and uh, object level security, Salesforce will go towards the uh, towards the uh, settings which will give the least amount of access. Okay, so in case there is a conflict between let's say profile and sharing rule from profile, let's say you have given just the read permission. But from sharing rule, you have given read and edit. Then user will not be able to edit because Salesforce will go towards the least permissible per principle options. Okay. In case, let's say from, um, uh, from profile, you have given read and edit. And let's say you have shared a record with, uh, with that user via sharing rule and just given read then in that case, user will only be able to read the record. He'll not be able to edit because Salesforce will go towards the least permissible things. Okay. Now let us understand all these four options. Okay. This is, uh, this is too much of uh, drawing, bad drawing, but now let me go back to and share my screen uh, to show you the Salesforce. Okay. All right. So this is the Salesforce org and on right on the, on the left hand side, what you see is I am logged in as a Salesforce admin on right. I will log in as a, as a uh, sales user, uh, in an incognito window to show you a couple of things maybe later on. Okay. So this is uh, Salesforce org profile and permission sets. You already know, uh, let me just show you a sample profile. Let me show you a custom profile. Let's say custom sales profile. Okay. Now you can see this. Uh, this is field level security. Let's say if I talk about opportunity object, uh, then this profile has access, read access on and edit access on these, these, these fields. Okay. So when you deploy something and you're 
user complain that they are not able to see the field, that could be because they do not have field level access, okay? What I want to show you right now is the object level access. So we will go down. And here you can see the object level access. So on account object, this user has read, create, edit, and delete permission. Okay. On lead object also, this guy has this user with the user who will have this profile will have read, create, edit, and delete permission. Similarly, these are the other objects. Uh, whichever objects he does not have permission or this profile does not have permission will be unchecked. Okay, so that's how you check whether that profile has a uh, has any uh, object level issue or not. Okay. But that is not what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you the OWD. OWD stands for organization by default, and uh, this is organization by default, and there are various access levels available. Okay, and whatever sharing and security we'll be talking today, we'll only be talking about internal Salesforce user. Community works pretty differently, and we will cover that in a separate topic. Okay, I don't want to confuse you guys with that. So we are talking about internal Salesforce user. Okay, so by default, all the leads in this org will have public read, write, and transfer. So no matter who is the owner of a lead or who is the uh, user currently logged in, he will be able to read all the leads. He will be able to edit all the leads and he will also have an option to transfer that lead to some other user. So it is pretty wide open. But if you see account and contract, you see that default internal access is private. That means a user who will have access to account object via their profile will be able to see the account, but only their account, only the accounts which they own. Okay. Now, if there is an account, let's say ABC and the current user A is the owner of it, but you want to share it with user B, then with the OWD, you will not be able to do because OWD has restricted other users to see the accounts of various different users. Now, in order to open up the access, we will have to use other record sharing options available. OWD clearly is private. That means user will not be able to see any other user's record. Okay, so in that case, we will check other options like role hierarchy, like sharing rules or manual sharing or the apex based sharing based on which option we choose we will be able to share that okay now you will also see this controlled by parent controlled by parent basically means that the access of this object will be controlled by its parent so you cannot specifically dis uh, uh, decide uh, internal access for this because parent is let's say a master and that holds responsibility to control the access of it. So if you have access to master, you will also be able to see the child as well. But if you are, if you do not have access to master, then no matter what kind of access you have on child, because the sharing of this is controlled by parent, you will not be able to see that. Okay, whenever you get an interview question on this topic, try to try to differentiate between when they say not able to see versus when they say not able to do. Most of the time when they say someone is not able to do something that comes in the profile section, whereas when they say someone is not able to see something that comes in the record level sharing access. access uh, okay, and whenever they say that they are not able to see a record, you obviously try a counter question by asking who is the owner of that record because if is the owner of the record and still not able to see then OWD becomes irrelevant because even if it is most restrictive and private he should be able to see his own records right we will go through questions later on okay now if you see that the uh, OWD is public read write okay uh, so private is the most restrictive where whereas public read write is like the uh, most uh, permissible uh, permissive permission okay so if it is already public read write that means anyone in the organization will be able to edit it and uh, read it that means you need not to open up the access of this particular object because it is already wide open it is already visible to everybody so that means you need not to open it up further so in that case 
if you go to create a sharing rule for an object which is already most uh, permissive in that case you will not be able to write a sharing rule because it is already shared with everybody see control by parent is not available in case of lookup relationship but when uh, we talk about standard object that works a bit differently so in standard object it is uh, how salesforce controls it so it can in contact you can see it is controlled by parent even though the relationship between account and contact is not master detail okay so in the in the custom objects you will create lookup relationship that look uh, the sharing will not be controlled by parent okay now you will get multiple other options as well and i want you guys to explore that but most of the time you will get private read and public read right okay so if it is already public read right that means you need not to create any sharing rule for that it is already available to all the users in your organization okay now this is the first option owt if you see this is called the default external access that means the external users like the community users and what kind of base level access they will have on these object okay and we will talk about them in a separate topic but the other option is grant access using hierarchies now this option check if checked that means that role hierarchies are already in place and this will respect the role hierarchy okay so if we are talking about account and this option is checked then that means that if a user a and user b is the let's say higher in the role hierarchy of user a then user b will be able to see all the records which user a is able to see for this object because grant access using hierarchy is checked and if i try to edit it for a standard object i will not have option to uncheck it okay so i will not be able to mark it as unchecked because salesforce don't want you to touch their base level of settings but if there is a custom object then you obviously have option to uh, uncheck it okay and these are the three normal options you will get in custom objects private read only and public read right okay and that's how you can uncheck it if you uncheck it that means that even if user b is the uh, higher in the role hierarchy than user a he will not be able to see the records of user a okay so make it check or uncheck very carefully and normally we don't do it on object level to be uh, we do not touch much of the things as a developer but always be very careful when you do that okay Okay, there are a couple of other settings as well and I want you all to go through that as well. So standard report visibility, they say, uh, if enabled user can view reports based on standard reports type that may expose data of users to whom which they don't have access to regardless of organization wide default. Okay, so there is a possibility that if, uh, if standard report visibility is true, then you may be able to see a couple of the fields which you normally cannot see. Okay manual record sharing okay manual record sharing is an option uh, by which they can share their own record okay so manual sharing we will obviously cover just after this manager group if enabled user can share records with their managers and manager subordinate groups we hardly use this option require permission to uh, view record names in lookup field so if if you enable this then even in the lookup you will not be able to see a particular record if you do not have at least read access on that record so if you check this even if you try type it here in the lookup or somewhere in the lookup field where you get to uh, add another uh, lookup field you will not be able to see that so you go through this option as well Secure guest user access is keeping the setting enabled is security best practice. Secure the guest user you have to or better guest users or default set to private. There can be changed. You can create guest user sharing rules. Yeah, obviously we this will auto be checked and you will not have an option to uncheck because uh, and that is related to the Salesforce data. Whenever it comes to exposing data to external users, Salesforce is very conservative and they don't allow much of the data to be exposed. For that, you will have to create sharing sets. Just like sharing rules we have for internal Salesforce user, for external users, we'll have to create sharing sets. Okay, Those who have configured the community will 
know this already but other people who have not worked on community sometimes you get a question that uh, what is the difference between sharing rules and sharing set so sharing set is basically just like sharing rules but here the question here the users uh, who will get the benefit of it will be the external users who will be using our community okay so let me make it full okay now this is just the owd any question on owd guys no thank you all right after owd this is the role hierarchy we checked okay and role hierarchy you can set up and see here from the setting itself so you can go to roles and this is the new org so there is no role setup but Obviously, you can set up and then uh, expand it. So this is the by default created by Salesforce and based on that, which role you provide to uh, which C. So here, the customer support international and customer support North America are on the same level. Okay, so in a way, they are subordinates. Similarly, SVP customer service support and SVP human resource are on same level. So they are subordinates. Okay. Okay, I'll again go back to sharing settings because there is much more to cover here. Okay, now after all the sharing setting option, uh, OWD options, you will see the sharing rules. Okay, sharing rules for all these objects. So you have lead sharing rule, you have account sharing rule and whatever share object you are looking for, you will be able to see directly here. Okay, so there'll be so many uh, objects and based on that you will have so many options to share okay and uh, we will create a sharing rule shortly after this so don't worry now what i want to do is sorry let me bring the other screen setting this up <laughs> sorry okay <clears throat> now let me log in this other user as well and to show you the uh so if you see the owd of account it is private that means a user should only be able to see his own account unless there is any sharing rule or manual sharing or any other sharing we have created okay so i am logged in as a system admin and i have access on the uh, account object read, create, edit, delete, everything. Uh, there is another user, uh, dummy user two. This user has custom sales profile. This profile also has uh, access on account object, but we will quickly verify that just to avoid any confusion. Uh, See, the best way to clear any doubt in record trading and security is to do practical things. Otherwise, it will always be a guesswork. And if you do the guesswork, interviewer will definitely trick you with lots of questions and he will put so many scenarios in there and you will get confused. So even if it is a small, silly doubt you feel, always go to org and check that and practice that. That is the advice I always give because otherwise it will just be a guesswork and I don't want you to do the guesswork if you are my student. Okay, go to org and try that. That is why Salesforce has given you two license. So on account, he'll have all such options. That is good. Now let us log in with this user on the incognito. So let's do that. good now if i go to account if i see okay currently is not able to see the account there is an account but 
if I if I try to check this account on this user. We will not be able to that see that right. So the same account which this user is owner of. Okay, this is the admin user and this is the dummy user on the right hand side of the screen. He's not able to see this account because OWD of account is private and we have not shared this account with any of the user. Okay. Now, how will we open it? Because OWD is set as private and uh, uh, that is why he's not able to see it. So there are multiple options. First one is record sharing. Other one is sharing rules and then manual sharing. Okay. Now we will not touch the role hierarchy because it's not something which we touch on day to day basis just to increase the visibility. If it is by default given or if it is given by the virtue of their, their actual hierarchy in their org, that is fine. But otherwise, just to make sure that one record is visible to other users will not touch the role hierarchy. So we are not going to change the role hierarchy as such. Okay. Now other option is manual sharing and sharing rules. So always go to manual sharing at last, follow the hierarchy. OWD is at the bottom, then role hierarchy, then sharing rules, then manual sharing. Manual sharing should be the last option. Sharing rule and APEC sharing, uh, you will decide depending on criteria you have. If criteria is complex and you are not able to reach there with the sharing rules, then you go for the APEX manage sharing. But manual sharing will come at the last. Manual sharing will only touch when the affected user base is very less, like one or two users. Let's say there are two users who are working on same team. One is going on leave for uh, two days. So what he wants is that all his cases should be uh, handled by the uh, his subordinate, his other user. So what he is going to do, he is uh, going to send all his cases manually to user B. But manual sharing will not work for the case where we have so many users which will get affected. You will not let's say a user is getting 100 cases every day and there are 10 different users you want them to manually assign that will be a lot of work to do and that will create chaos in the org so if you want something to get automatically done create sharing rule if the user base which is going to get affected by this uh, is large then go for the sharing rule so whenever you'll have to decide between manual sharing and sharing rule you will see for how many users are we going to do this if it is just one user do it manually. If it is a team of 10 users, 12 users, create a sharing rule. Okay. So what I'm going to do here now is that I will create a sharing rule. Okay. Let's go down to account sharing create a new rule here you will see two options rule type one is based on record owner other one is based on criteria okay so that's how this is two types of uh, sharing rule we will call it test sharing rule and i want this to be based on da, 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 da. now there are limited options when i say we have to create sometimes APEC sharing because of the limited options available here. Okay. If you want to share it based on the record owner, then you have all these three options. Okay. You cannot select that. Uh, if the record owner ID is equal to this, then do this. You will, if you go to the criteria based sharing here also, you will have options to traverse to these fields, but only for the object on which you are writing this. Okay. So if you are writing a sharing rule on account, you will be able to go to the account field and everything. But let's say if you want to traverse to any other object and then put some criteria and something that will not be available. So it is a straight, if your condition is a straightforward, go to this and create that. But if it is a bit complex, you will not have options to. So what you're going to do is that you will try with the sharing rule, but if you are not able to build the formula uh, based on what you need, then you will definitely go to create an APEC sharing. 
Now, what I want to do is, let's say if account name is, this is just a sample. Normally we do not create it like this. So if let's say account name is equals to test account, then I want to share it with. Now in the share with option is also, uh, you will only have public group roles and roles and subordinate. So you will have to uh, select here. I have created a public group already. So let me show you that. When I was saying that public groups are used to uh, increase the visibility, this is what I meant. So in public group, you can add people and then can share a record with that public group so that every user in that public group will be able to see. So I've created this test group where this dummy user is already there and this is also one of the limitation that if you want to share it with just one user, you will, you do not have option to refer that user directly. Okay. So I'll share it with the public group test group. Now, this is also very important. The, when you are sharing account, which is the parent account, which controls the access of couple of other uh, objects, then you will get an option to define the access level on such objects as well. So with account, you open up the access for opportunity, contract and cases. Okay. So first, uh, you will uh, tell, so you want to share accounts, whether you want it to be just read only, or you want them to give a read, write permission as well. If you select read, write. Okay. Then here also you will get the read, write permission and on case as well, you can select read, write, but if you just select read only, then you will again get depending on how you want to do that. Okay. So I just want to give them read only permission and on opportunity also, I want to give them read only permission and case also. So any opportunity associated with this account will also be then shared with this dummy user too. Okay. Is there any opportunity associated? Yes. There are three opportunities associated. So it should not only get just the account, but also the opportunities. There is no case. So that is fine. Now that's it. Why we are getting Chinese language. Let's save the sharing rule. Okay. It will. Okay. There is. Now, if I refresh this. Now you can see that you are able to see this account and not only able to see, you are also able to see the opportunities, but we just gave the read only permission, right? So if I go to detail, you can see that inline is enabled and edit option will also be there because I have edit permission on account. Okay. That is why edit is there. But when I try to edit this account, this should definitely give me error. Let me first put the value on the required things. If I try to edit this, this will give me an error that you don't have the necessary privilege to edit this record. See your admin for help. So because we just gave the read permission, we are not able to edit this. So sometimes interviewer will ask you then why there is an edit button because we have edit permission on account by default by our profile, but we cannot edit this account because that account has only been shared within the read mode. So when I was saying that there, when, whenever there is a conflict between record level security and object level security, like this case where on act, on object level security, you have a date option, but from the record level security, you have just given read Salesforce will go towards the less permission. Okay. Towards the less permissible, uh, options. So that is why you are not able to edit it. Any doubt in this guys? Yeah, more it one doubt. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. Um, uh, for this account, uh, for the sharing rule. Uh, he is able to see the opportunities, right? Uh, as a child, 
Yeah. In the read only. <clears throat> yeah. So, so is this behavior is because of this account sharing rule or in OWD, uh, we have the opportunity as a controlled by parent since it is. You can, you can check it right here. Yeah. So opportunity is private. By default, you will not be able to see the opportunity of any other user. But here, because you share the account and account holds some power over opportunity, that is why it gives you an option whether you want to share opportunities as well or not. Now, be very clear when you share the account that what will happen to such opportunities. Okay. So obviously your business owners will tell you that whether to share the opportunities as well along with accounts or not. Based on that, you will clear, create the sharing rule and then based on that, you will define. But if you want that, they should be able to edit the opportunity. That option was also there. So it depends on business needs. Okay. Yeah. Hello, hi. Mohit, one more question. Yeah, please go ahead, Ashish. Uh, so let's say I am the owner of an account and uh, I am sharing an account with other user and I have only read permission. Oh, no, no, no. Let's say I am not the owner and I have only read permission for an account and I am sharing with a user. And in the sharing setting, I am giving uh, uh, read and write both. So will the user be able to? If, if you do not have edit permission, then you will. Uh, how will you be, sh be sharing that record with other user? You need to have that sharing permission, right? If you only have just the read permission on, let's say, if let's say account, uh, the this user who is uh, uh, the owner of this record only has read permission. And if you create a sharing rule, You want me to try that thing? Uh, so A has only the read permission on account. Okay. Yeah. You created a sharing rule and you just want to give the read and edit as well. Depending on C criteria, if you have criteria, you want to share it with every user in the uh, edit mode. Maybe you will be able to do that because sharing rule will allow you to do that. Uh, but ultimately it will be on the user, which you have shared with, whether they will be able to edit or not depends on if they have object level permission to edit that record from their profile as well. Okay. So uh, if on the profile, they have edit permission on that object. And if you have shared it with the ed edit mode, then yeah, they should be able to edit it depending on what criteria you set here. Okay. But it it is very less likely to be the case that the owner itself is on the read only mode. Okay. Uh, okay. See, when you come to, when you say that this user is not the owner, but when you share it with the sharing rule, yeah, it with with the virtue of sharing rule, you'll be able to do that. Ultimately, it will be on object level. The user who is going to get access, if they have object level access to edit it, they should be able to edit it because from sharing rule also you are giving edit and on the object, uh, they also have edit. So they should be able to edit. But in a very rare case, this will happen that a non-owner uh, will be sharing such records. But there will be a couple of records which you want to be shared with all the users in whole organization and in the edit mode. So that can be done with the sharing rule. Okay. 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 Thank you. Mom. Now, what will happen when we delete this, the sharing rule? Will this user dummy user will still have access to this account or this will be recalculated? Anybody? I think this will be recalculated. Uh, if you delete it, it will not be able to share, uh, see the account. Yeah, so now I'm going to delete this. <clears throat> this is also an interview question is the, if they say that uh, you shared it, then later on you deleted the, the sharing rule, what will happen to the original record which you earlier shared? Okay. It's currently in process. So we'll wait for job. And sometimes it takes a lot of time depending on the data you have. So whenever account sharing rule gets deleted, it also recalculates the opportunity and cases as well. Okay. And you can check this by going to background jobs.
here you deleted the sharing rule you can see that this has been completed at what time okay so there is an option to check this okay Now you see, I have a different way of teaching to be very frank. I just try to teach it in a manner that you guys remember those things in a long run rather than just giving the answers because that would have been so easy for me to just go through the questions without going the hassle of showing it. But uh, I, I don't find it very effective in long run. So that is why I have, I have tried to show you this. Now, if you refresh this, you'll be able to see that the record has, the access has been removed. So whenever the sharing rule you will delete, it will recalculate the uh, all the records which were shared and based on what access they currently have, it will be recalculated. Okay. Now, this was the sharing rule. Okay. Now, let us try to share it manually. Okay. So to share it manually, you will get this sharing option. Okay. And that is why manual sharing is not very effective because you will have your users have to do this manually. So if they have to share it, this record with 10 users, they'll have, they'll have to follow this system for 10 different users. Okay. So if it is just for one or two users, that is fine. But if it is, if the user base, which is going to get affected by this is large, then it is not worth, then it's better to have a sharing rule. Okay. Now, I want to share it with the dummy user. And again, here you will have option to choose. Okay. Uh, Mohit, in this case, uh, can we only select one user or we can select multiple users? You can select other users as well. You can select other users as well and as well as public groups as well. So uh, you can do it in the public group and uh, add all the users there. What I'm trying to say is that this is a manual step. So they'll have to do it manually. Just it. I mean, not repeating it for all the users, maybe for different records, they'll have to repeat, but they can select manual other users as well and public groups as well. So yeah, multiple users can be selected. Like if there is another user. Do we have that user? Just in the browser. We have an integration user, so let me search it. Let's select security user. So yeah, we'll be able to select two different records, okay? Two different users at the same time. Sorry. And what about contact access if you want to explicitly mention the contact access for then? contact for contact you will have an option to create its own uh just a second it is control by payment so for contact you will create a separate sharing tool okay it will okay. not it, I mean, from account, you will not have an option to give access to contacts as well. It will only give to account uh, opportunities and cases. Uh, let's say this time we don't want to give any other access, just the account read only access, okay? And save this. I think if we share the account, the contacts will also be access. So... Let's create an account. It is, yeah, it is controlled by parents. So maybe that is the case. Uh, test contact. Okay. Now let us refresh this, okay? And see what happens. So yes, you are able to see the contacts as well. And...
but you will not be able to edit it because on account you have just the read permission so that is why you will not be able to edit the contacts as well okay now let us go to account and try to edit it Okay, so you will not be able to edit account as well. Now here you have shared it manually. Okay. So a very important question comes here is that what if now I change the owner of this? Now if I change the owner of this, what will happen to this sharing? Because this, this user in the interview preparation batch to this Salesforce admin has shared this record with dummy user. Now, if I change the owner of this account itself, who created the sharing record, will the sharing record exist in system or it will automatically be deleted and this user will not have any access. So let us try that. Okay. So I am changing it to a different owner. And whenever I change the owner of it, there are multiple options comes. Okay. And you have to go through these options as well. First, you remember these things. Whenever you change the owner, the new owner will become the owner of these related records to test account as well. Okay. So any open opportunity which we have on this account will automatically be transferred to the new owner. Contracts in draft and in approval status will go to new owner. Orders in draft status will go to new owner. Contacts will also go to new owner. Notes and attachment and open activities will also go to the new owner. But all the closed opportunity which were already closed will not move automatically unless you select it here. Uh, transfer accounts owners close opportunity. So if you select this option, then closed opportunities will also go to, okay. There can be a possibility that there are, there is one opportunity which is owned by any other user that will by default will not be moved to the new owner. But if you select this option, even if that opportunity is open, that by default will not go to the new owner. But if you select this option, then only it will be moved to the new owner. So let's say, Let's say uh, this person is the owner of this account and there is one opportunity which is owned by another user. And it is even if it is open, if you change the owner of it, this opportunity will not move to the new owner automatically unless you select. Unless you select that checkbox I was talking about. OK, so all these options are the interview questions. OK, sometimes they try to trick you. OK, so be very careful. By default, these things will happen. Open opportunities which are on this user's name, whichever is the current user will move to the new user. But if there is any opportunity which is on someone else's, even if that is open, it will not be moved to new user automatically. And if there are closed opportunity, even if on the name of current user, they will also not move to the new user unless you select this option. Okay. Here, transfer account owners, open cases, open cases, uh, if you set, check this, then open cases will also be transferred to the new owner. Okay. When you work in a big organization, they want features like this. Like whenever I change the owner, all the cases should move to. For that, you need not to build anything. You just need to know that these options are already available so that you can suggest the better business approach. Okay. And sometimes they want notification to be sent to whenever ownership changes. That option is already there. You just need to check it. Okay, I have seen people building it custom without knowing that this is by default available. They never focus on this. So these are the options. Now, if I change the owner to another user. And now if I refresh this. 
the manual shading is gone. Okay. So if I have shared a record manually with any other user and then later on somebody changes my own ownership, then manual shading also will be recalculated and manual shading will be removed. Okay. So remember that this is an interview, very important interview question as well. Okay. Now we have covered all these things. Let us talk about Apex Apex sharing. Okay. Let me check the question. So do, 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 do. I was asked to say that the user is owner. I don't like the manual sharing if you could make the sharing rule that also affect like them, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you change if you change the owner, then it will recalculate and most probably it will remove the previous sharing. Okay. Unless you then go to other user and share it again. So all the previously shared record will be removed if it is a manual sharing. Same is the case with the APEC sharing for the standard objects as well. So if you have an APEC sharing created for a standard object, then uh, that is also that also acts as a uh, manual sharing if you later on change the criteria of it. Okay, there are so many questions I am getting on this. Uh, guys, please copy these questions and put it on the question sheet we have. Okay, uh, because we will, I don't think we'll be covering questions today because of the time limit, but we'll have each and every question answered in this topic. We will not move next until we answer each and everything because this is an important topic. And I want this topic as your strong topic. You should never be uh, defensive by, about this topic. This topic shows that how good you are in admin, how good your concepts are related to the sharing and security and how good a developer you will become. Because if your data and sharing security concepts are clear, then you will obviously have no stopping in the Salesforce industry. So I'll have this topic has to be your stronger topic. You should get excited whenever record sharing and security comes in, in an interview. That is what I want from you guys. Okay. So no matter how many, uh, how many questions we have to go through, we will go through, we will spend time. If, if possible, we can go through questions as well on the weekends as well on this but we will make this perfect. If the owner is deactivated or frozen for manual sharing rule, see if the owner is deactivated, uh, that has to be checked. Okay. Let us check it right now. Okay. So let's see if I share this record now. I share this record with dummy user. See, I have manually shared this record with dummy user. I'm admin. I can do that, right? Treat it as if this user has shared this record. Okay. Now, if I go and see if I can deactivate, this is the standard user. Let's first freeze it. I think on freeze it will not. Um, it should it will not remove the visibility. Uh, why I'm not able to freeze it? Is it because it is not a Salesforce licensed user? Let's try to deactivate it. Okay, delegating, deactivating user removes from all the delegate groups and sharing privilege. So it will remove the sharing privilege. Of course, the following page prompts you to remove this So an active user. You can still transfer this user's record to an active user and with the user's name under manage user. Okay, uh, I don't think this will. See, this is the standard user, I guess, because of that, I'm not able to do that. 
just a second let me see if i can use any other user that's a problem with the uh, uh with this is that you only get two license and the user is the user you achieve created right i believe that you can do it yeah but that is the user i have shared the record mm -hmm. so that and i cannot do vice versa because then i am salesforce admin i have bunch of special privileges uh so do, 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 do. okay let me let me note this down okay this is good thing to find out i will create one identity user and we can share the code by using the custom object let me share just a second now I can do it in the sandbox as well, bro. Okay, you're saying we can create a user now, Mohit, because uh, Salesforce uh, system admin licenses to no other users we can create now. One more admin we can also create now. But what what advantage would it bring? Like yeah, but we can create uh, users with other profile now. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a standard Salesforce license. Just a second. Yes, I'm creating the custom object and one or two fields, we can share that custom object to identity user. Okay. See, I will I will check that. That will break my flow whatever I'm doing. I will, I have written, uh, I have written this down and I will check that, okay? In the sandbox, why to put the hard route when easy is available. You guys can check it on your own if you want to check it with the identity user, okay? All right. So, APEC sharing, okay? Now, APEC sharing is the sharing which we create just for the similar scenarios like sharing rule. It's just that whenever we do not have options to create sharing rules because of the limited options available on the UI. Okay, so if you go to the sharing rule and you see there are two types of rule you can create based on owner. You want to share it with those are straightforward. If owner is part of this role or public group then share it with this role and public group. That's easy. Based on criteria, you can share it. Okay, so if let's say account is active share it with bunch of users if uh, billing country is india then share it with the india public group if it is us then share it with the us simple sharing rules can be created simple criteria can be fulfilled now let's say on opportunity you have to create a sharing rule but the criteria is that you'll have to first check if opportunities associated account is active then share that opportunity with let's say user b so in that case, even if you go to a uh, opportunity, okay. And we go to the based on criteria. We will not have options to go to account and then check the, if whether account is active or not. Okay. So simple criteria can definitely be done in the sharing rules but whenever a complex criteria comes in it becomes really difficult to create a sharing rule then in that case we go for the apex sharing okay so let's say the criteria is every time i insert a new opportunity okay and if the opportunity's account is active then share that record with let's say a public group or let's say with another user so for that, we'll have to create a APEC sharing. Okay, how we do that? So for every object, we have a share record available. Okay, so if I just give me a second, I think somebody is at door. Huh?
Okay. So what happens is that for a cr difficult criteria or for the complex criteria, we'll have to create the apex related shading. Now here situation is very simple. Every time whenever an opportunity gets created, we will check the associated account and share it with another user if account is active. So how are we going to create it from apex trigger? We can do that. We will check if in the after context, we will see if associated account is active, then we will create the share record. So let's say for opportunity, this is uh, just a second sharing this. I don't think I'll be creating it right now because of the limited time we have. But at least give you a brief about it. Okay. So if I go to the developer console and give you a structure of it, let's open the opportunity trigger. So this is opportunity trigger which checks everything before and after. And if trigger, see this will not work in a before context because we need account ID. Okay. We need associated account ID and we'll also be needing opportunity ID. Whenever we create the opportunity share record, we'll have to associate a parent ID. Then for that, we will be needing opportunity ID as well. So this obviously will work only in the after context. And here we will have logic to check if associated account is active or not if it is active then instead of creating it right here i'll create it in a separate helper class call the helper class to create opportunity share records and here we can call something like uh, uh, opportunity share handler dot create share record okay and we can pass trigger dot new here for all the opportunities and then later on we can go to new class, create this class and let's copy the method name. And pass the list of opportunity. Okay. Name it opportunity list, store it here. Let us comment these things. Sorry. So you have to here just put some conditions if uh, some logic to check if the associated account is active or not. If it is active, then you will call this. And this class will be responsible to create the sharing record for the opportunity. Now, how are we going to create that and everything we will cover tomorrow, but that will be the more or less structure here. We will have a loop on opportunity and then inside that we will create a share record. But for that, I have to explain a few of the things which are associated with the uh, sharing like uh, uh, like uh, row cause and like parent ID, user or group ID. So that I will cover tomorrow. So here we will have a loop. And there is something called opportunity share. So for every uh, object will have a share record as well. Uh, by which we sh create a sharing. 
opportunity share or any share object is an association between the main object which you are trying to uh, share with the user or public group you are trying to share. So that's this this is more of a uh, junction in between user and the object which you are trying to share. So in this case, opportunity and user. So this is an association between a user and an opportunity with help of the opportunity share records. I'll share a link with you to go through that. Okay. And then we will have to provide the parent ID or in this case, opportunity ID. Uh, then we will have to create the user or group ID. So with, with, with which user you want to share this, okay? So I want to share it with this dummy user. Okay, and uh, the, the, we changed. So let me find this dummy user. See this access uh, we'll have to remove. Uh, did we not delete that manual sharing or something? We'll have to remove this access as well so that we can share. Okay, dummy user. See, I'm going to hard code the ID, but you will not do in your real project, okay? Now hard code the ID. I'm doing it for the simplicity here. I'm not even sure if this is the correct, but later on we will see. Uh, opportunity share has a field called row, uh, row cause which basically means the reason why you are sharing it, okay? If you do not select it, that will by default be manual and for all the standard object, it is manual only. So even if you select it, you will only have an option to select it as a manual. That means it will behave as a manual sharing and if you later on change this, then that manual sharing will also be removed. So this is going to be manual. Not sure if any other field needs to be created. Oh, da, 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 da. Opportunity access label. Yes, you want to you want to provide the access level as well. So I just want to provide. Let's say read. Let's say if there is any more field. Rook cause we are given, no, 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 I think we are good. Now, as we are doing in the loop, let us create the list on top of loop for opportunity share and insert that outside the loop, okay? What we're going to do here is we are going to add this in the list, okay? And we'll go outside of the loop and we'll insert it, okay? I'm just writing the bare minimum code guys. Okay, so don't check it for the best practices and all. Just want to show you the concept rather than the best practices. We will cover best practices a lot later on. Okay, so this will this code will be fired from your trigger whenever you will insert an opportunity and associated account is active. Okay, now how we gonna test it is, I will be using the debug console. So I will directly be invoking this class okay 
and in this method. So first, let me create the list of opportunity. Uh, here, let's write the uh, circle query to get the select ID. I don't think we need anything, just the ID, but Where? I will manually trigger it for a particular opportunity. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's currently there is no opportunity shared with this user. Uh, let me copy this opportunity and share it with this user. Okay, so I'm going to copy the ID of this. Let us also confirm the user ID. I am not sure if this is the correct user ID. So let us query the user ID and copy it. So this is the ID of dummy user. I want to share it with the dummy user. So copy it. Paste it here. And now we have got the list of opportunities. So what we did is that we manually got the opportunity which I want to share with this user. What I'm going to do is that I will invoke this class and this method and pass this opportunity list inside this as a parameter. And that should create a opportunity share record for us. Okay. So class name dot method name. And here we will just pass the opportunity list. I have not put any debug statement because I directly want to see it here that this user should have a read access on opportunity if the code written is fine and there is no error, okay? So let's execute this. I think I did not change it. Is not saved. So now you can see that you have option to this dummy user have option to see this opportunity as test opportunity too. This is the same opportunity which I shared with this user. Current owner is our admin, and this will get the read access. So if I try to edit, ideally this should give us some error as well. Okay. Yeah, so you do not have necessary privilege to edit this record because we only provided the read permission. So this is a simple code we have written just to create an opportunity share record for this. Similar to opportunity share, we have share record for all the objects. Um, even for the custom object, we have the share record and you can uh, you can use this tool to query and see if you are able to or if you get any share record or not. So if you query here, select ID from opportunity share. Uh, you will see that there are already many records available i want to see the record which just got created so i will share the where opportunity id is equals to what we gave okay so i just want to copy this opportunity id So in the back end, you can see that uh, the record gets created, okay? So if you see this, if you go to this, ID. yeah, you'll not be able to see it directly. Let us see the data of it.
Yeah. So in the back end, you see that a record on opportunity share object gets created, which associates the opportunity with the user you want to share that particular record with. So if you see, there should be other field as well, which will say user or group ID. So this is an association between user and group ID. Okay, so that's how we, uh, every time you share a record, a share uh, uh, via IPX, you you uh, get this opportunity share or for whatever object you are doing, you get a share record created. That share record basically associates your object which you want to share with the user or group you want to share that record with. That is the back end of it and that's how the uh, it happens. Okay, now for custom object, there are things which are a bit different. Okay, so for custom object, let us try to create an Apex sharing tomorrow and then see how this works for custom object and then take on the questions. I don't have any rush to cover these questions because I, even if it takes like two more extra days, I'm okay in this topic because this topic deserves that. Okay. So with that, I'll stop sharing and uh, whatever questions you guys, you guys have put in on chat, please, please feel free to add those questions on the sheet. We definitely will be covering all questions on this topic. I hope today's session was interactive and uh, knowledgeable for you. Uh, this topic is a topic which might make few people uncomfortable and that is completely okay. Sometimes we feel that uh, these are easy things, but actually this is not easy. Like record sharing and security is very tricky. Unless we have our concepts cleared properly, then only we will be able to answer questions confidently in an interview. I am only covering from the interview point of view. So it is very important that your base is clear in this topic to be able to answer questions with 100% confidence. Otherwise you will just be doing guesswork and uh, that will not be a good uh, thing to do. So uh, with that, I'll be...